I've been living and working here on the coast in and around Marbella for 20 years now. I moved here. Um, I went briefly to Portugal and then quickly came to the Costa del Sol because of the possibility of working much stronger here than it was in Portugal back then. Um, and I quickly found, even though I, I knew the Algarve very, very well because I'd been going there since I was a child, but I quickly found that this place was somewhere that I felt connected and I felt was right for me. And so I made it my home. Um, and I've, fast forward 20 years, I'm now very, very fortunate to actually work in an industry which I, I just love, it's fabulous. I mean, the, the, there's nothing to, to complain about in terms of what I, the opportunities that I have here, working within this beautiful climate, working with beautiful properties. And of course, probably what keeps it so exciting is the opportunity of meeting people day in, day out from all parts of the world who are essentially, they need to talk about themselves so that we can understand what it is that they're trying to do. And it's fascinating. As an agent, it's fascinating. It's wonderful and very rewarding. I, I would say it more than helps. I would say it's essential. The word I often, often use is evangelical because that's how I am about living here. I, I moved here 20 years ago. My son was born here. I committed to Marbella and the wider Costa del Sol in so far as I'm not, I don't consider myself to be an expat. Of course, I am an expat. I always will be because I'm British, but I made it, um, I made a commitment to living and working here as somebody who considers it to be their home in so far as I learned the language. I pay my taxes here. My child was born and bred here and educated here. Um, and so I can speak from the heart about it and about why it's such an incredible place to live. Um, so, yes, I think it is important, you know, people. People come here knowing that there's a, a, a dream in their minds that they have, but not quite knowing how to accomplish it and all of the hurdles that come with it. So to have somebody on side who you can actually ask all of the questions about educating children or what happens if you get ill or all the finer details of actually buying a property, then obviously that's very important to, um, to, to have somebody who, who believes in this. It can't be any other way because the majority of the people that I deal with, and probably the vast majority of, of the um, property sales within the, the arena that I work in, are, are to uh, foreigners, to expats. And so imagine if I'm living in the UK and I want to go and buy a property in the UK, I walk into an estate agent on the high street and they have one house listed. Here, the, the, the client is coming into, a, into an area which they're probably only going to be within for a few days, a few weeks perhaps, if they're coming on, on viewing trips. And within that time, they've really got to get to understand what the possibilities are. It's, it's not simple. You know, we work from, let's say, between Malaga and Soto Grande and all of the little enclaves and poblaciones in between where there are little villages or areas, communities, which are right for one person, not so good for another. So it's, it's really um, much more complicated than you might imagine at the outset. <sighs> Marbella has proven itself to be a, a real gem in so far as everything that those of us who know it and love it and are passionate about it have known for all these years is suddenly being verified by the amount of attention that it's being given from people from all over the world. Why that's happening, I think there's no question that there's been a knee-jerk reaction because of the pandemic. Absolutely, I know that people have reacted to a dream again, there's that word again, in their heads of, of living this kind of lifestyle, whether it be in the countryside, whether it be in an apartment, whether it be in a beautiful villa like this one, but living a lifestyle, that dream, they've suddenly realized they want to put into action because home working has become a possibility. Um, the, the importance of having quality time with your family has become much more prevalent for most people who've, who've really had to sort of sit back and think about what's important in their lives. And Marbella has proven to be incredibly attractive to many, many people. And that's what's happening here at the moment. And we're seeing um, the, the amount of, 
um, interest, not, not necessarily only visits at the moment because there are still some restrictions, but the amount of interest from all over the world translating into sales, whether they be through viewing, uh, virtual viewings or through actual um, real life viewings is, is something that none of us could have foreseen. The trends in so far as the property, obviously people have different budgets, um, but what everybody wants is to have outdoor space, um, a beautiful scenery around them. Uh, in, in, in the case of you know, having a sort of higher budget, then detached properties are literally walking off the shelves. I mean, from one day to the next, I have clients who contact me about a particular villa that maybe they've seen on Chiero, for example. Um, and within a couple of days, that property has been sold. Um, so I think whether it's from 500,000 up to 5 million, I think the real emphasis is on any property that can provide some kind of um, open space, great feeling um, and ambience within which a family can live and be together if they're working from home or otherwise. When it comes to um, the type of clients, again, from all over the world. America's proven to be most surprising, I would say, with American interest, American buyers ongoing. Um, but also a lot of Scandinavians, the Danish are very strong, the Swedish are very strong. And if I told you the British are very strong, you'd probably not believe it, but the British have proven to have, nothing has put them off from, from looking for this kind of lifestyle, even though the, the, the um, the structure of doing so obviously for them is a little bit different now, but certainly it's, uh, it's proven that the, the British are still very interested. Um, if, we, if we speak about rather than just Marbella, but the Costa del Sol, and this is where I start to get passionate and evangelical, we, our, our coast is very, very special. It can't be compared to any other coast within, within Spain or around Spain. Why? For a number of reasons. Historically, because back in the 1970s when Franco decided that it would be a good idea to welcome tourists, that really started to establish this, this enclave, if you like, as a, a place of interest. And slowly, slowly that started to develop into um, a destination which responded to, to the needs of people who were looking to travel and to experience something outside of their own country. Of course, um, up until more recently, it has, there's been a lot of, or um, well, the majority of, of people, buyers, if you like, or visitors, have either been tourists or retired people. But in the last five, six, seven, ten years, I would say, the structure or the, the what's the word I'm looking for, the, um, the, the profile of the people who are buying are people who are coming to live here and work here, people like me who've committed to it. So no longer is it necessarily just people wanting to have a second home in the sun, um, but still pay their taxes back in their home country. People here have set up businesses. People are you know, committing to Spain, committing to the, co the coast as, a, as an ongoing sort of life choice, which of course means that the infrastructure gets fed into more because there's more money to put into that. So we have better roads, we have better hospitals, we have a fantastic airport. Malaga Airport is now one of the busiest in, in Spain. Um, so I think it's, it's very important to understand that this isn't like other coasts. We also have a much better climate. We have a microclimate because it's protected. The coast is protected by these mountains. Um, and also we're close to Africa. We're in a bay, so we have very mild winters and, and cooler summers. The other coasts, such as Alicante, they, they don't have those. They don't have the benefits that we have in that respect. Um, they don't have the infrastructure, perhaps the climate is different. And um, they, so they, they tend to be less favored than our coast for the reasons that I've already explained. In, in the United Kingdom, real estate agents are seen, of, seen, seen as um, not necessarily in particularly favorable light a lot of the time, are they? <laughs> That's not something I've come across here. Um, and I suppose it's because, you know, most, most buyers, most potential buyers understand that coming to a foreign country to buy a property is very, very different to buying a property in their home country. And the fact is, 
you have to take a leap of faith. You have to determine, decide that you're going to trust the information that you're being given. And this goes back to the beginning of your question. Finding a good estate agent is so important. Um, my advice to people who are perhaps looking on a portal like Kiera, there are many, many agencies who, who will be advertising on there and most clients will send emails all over the place to different agencies, which is quite normal and natural. But my advice is to, to really uh, try from the very outset to focus on one that you feel is responding to your needs, listening to what you're saying. First of all, I hear it all the time from clients. We didn't continue with them because they just didn't listen to what we were saying. They were sending us properties that of no interest. So look very carefully at the feedback that you're getting from your agent from the outset. Um, see how much they're going beyond the call of duty and so far as offering you other information, asking you questions that perhaps you might not even have thought of yourself. Um, and once you have that that uh, connection with a with an agent i would my advice is to try and stay with that one person or that one agency at least because there, there's a there's a big market out here which means there are a lot of agents and of course everybody wants a piece of the pie and it can be very very confusing for for clients who perhaps believe that it's good to or, or it's going to benefit them by speaking to lots of different people but in the long run it's not um, why? Because at some point you're going to commit to getting on an aeroplane, coming over to Spain, and you're going to have a, a week, perhaps two weeks, perhaps two months, during which time your focus is to find a property. You need the continuity with the person that you found that you trust. You need to not have to keep going out on a day to go and see new properties and starting again building a relationship with a new agent who you haven't met before. It's easy to do because the collaboration means that you can just choose one agent and any property that you find with another agent, you can see through your chosen agent. So it's not difficult to do, but it is key. I would say it's absolutely key. For me as an agent, your, cri your search criteria are important for me because it, it allows me to start to get to know you, to understand you, to know what you're thinking. However, be very, very clear that your initial search criteria are unavoidably going to change once, once you start to go through the process. I always say to clients, you know, sometimes people will say to me, look, we won't be coming for eight months. It's never too soon to start looking. And somebody like me is the person who does the, the, the legwork, you know, the tedious legwork. I'm here. I know this property market inside out. It's easy for me to go and visit properties on behalf of a client. The important thing is to, to start the relationship, keep a good connection with the client in terms of liaising about properties that the client is, is saying that look interesting, sending back new ideas for that client to look at. And for me to go and actually investigate what the client wants in order to shortlist. When that client arrives, I then have a nice definitive shortlist of properties in which, for which we can, we can make the initial visits. But inevitably, that, that criteria, that those criteria are going to change once the client lands on the ground here, because you might think that Estepona is something for you. When you see Estepona, you might feel that actually, do you know what? I think I felt more comfortable when I was closer to the airport. So let's look at La Cala de Mijas. You just don't know. But what is important is to hit the ground running. Don't come here without having a plan and get a plan by speaking to an agent. What is wonderful about the job is having the trust of a client and being able to, to inform and educate and help that client and to realize the the process of the dream that they've actually that they've got as their end goal is it, it's wonderfully rewarding um and inevitably i don't think i don't think i've got any clients who aren't now close friends of mine because that process is a lot of fun oh goodness that's so so much fun um hard work of course can be very, very frustrating. It can be incredibly frustrating. It can be heartbreaking if you lose a property or if something stacks up that doesn't look like it can go forward. Um, but it's a, a process, it's a journey. And when you get to the end of it and you 
you're in touch with your clients and they're living here. This is happening to me at the moment. I've got some clients and on a daily basis, they're now friends of mine. They send me messages about what they're doing and, and they don't probably realize that they're doing it. But to me, I'm thinking you're living that dream now that you always wanted and that they're, you know, they're just so happy. They're so, they're three kids that they bought here with them and, and they're just, they couldn't love it anymore. There are some agencies who will organize viewing trips. Um, for me, I feel that it's probably best if, I, if I'm advising a client, if I was a client and I was advising a client, I would suggest that uh, you do your own view, viewing trips, you organize everything yourself. It's not to say that the agent can't help you with suggestions of a good place to stay because, you know, let's say for example that we're going to be looking in, in Soto Grande and um, so perhaps come up with some just suggestions of good hotels or an apartment to rent and so on. Um, but generally I think, you know, nothing comes for free in this life and if an agency is uh, suggesting that they book a viewing trip for you, then you're probably going to feel a little bit committed to uh, you know, carrying on that process. And if that is a relationship which you're not particularly comfortable with, then it becomes difficult. So I would, my suggestion is keep your independence, absolutely. Certainly, you know, work with the agent that you feel close to, but don't be tied into anything.